Today I'm going to respond to some comments that I've gotten on my videos. So this is just purely to have a friendly discussion. This is not to promote any sort of arguing. And honestly, these aren't really even hate comments or anything. These are just more critical comments, which I get a lot of, especially on videos where I talk about selling stuff. I feel like those videos attract the investor bro community. And I know you might be saying like, aren't you an investor bro yourself? No, I'm not. Um, I consider the investor bros, like how I like to describe these people. The investor bros are people who have never sold a single sealed product in their life. They buy just every single product thinking that it's going to go up to the moon and they don't understand, you know, reallocating money and me selling a product because they just think that every single product you buy, you must hold for three to five years and you can't sell it off or else you, you failed. Um, so those are the people I consider to be the investor bros, just very closed minded people. Um, I feel like those people honestly have been misled, especially when this whole investing thing, whatever got popular. Um, these people, I feel like they just got to be a little bit more open-minded um, because the comments, I get the same comments from all these investor bro people and it's the same things. And I feel like these people don't really understand what reallocating money is um, and why I'm doing it because they seem to think that holding um, hundreds of collection boxes is a good idea. So just wanted to respond to some comments just to get some conversation going down in the comments below. So let's see what comments I've got here and what I have to say to them. So here's the first comment. So obviously you can find these comments on my videos, but I didn't include their username because I feel like that would be more uh, uh, promoting like arguing. Um, but here's the first comment. So for everyone else that isn't this guy, which I guess is kind of mean, but I'll take it. Rule of thumb, you if you are selling boxes like this, never, ever, in all caps, sell this stuff off to a LGS like this. This is an example of selling for short gains. Sure, you made money, prince for a day or king for the rest of your life i guess this guy started becoming a philosopher at the end oh my gosh but okay so responding to this comment so i get a lot of comments whenever i say i sold to a car store a lot of people have a bad stigma which is i mean i guess it's fair but they have a stigma against these card stores thinking that i got ripped off well if you guys really to see it from my eyes and knowing how much they're paying out versus market after fees I'm not really doing bad at all. And I feel like a lot of people just have a stigma and they can't seem to get their head around that. So I would say selling to a game store for the most part usually isn't a, a good idea. I would agree with that. But I have found specific card stores that specialize in Pokemon where they're able to give me a higher percentage of market price because that's what they specialize in. So that's why I've been selling to these stores. I'm not just selling to random game stores. I'm selling to stores that mainly spe specialize in Pokemon. So if that makes sense to you guys, then I guess great, but if you can't still understand that, then I guess you can just keep saying that um, I'm making a mistake by selling to them. Um, so, talking about the short gain stuff. So, I've explained this in my videos, and I'm assuming these people haven't watched all my videos where I explain why I'm selling this stuff, but all of the stuff I sold were all collection boxes, blisters, those are the products I was selling. I was never really selling any booster boxes other than the Obsidian Flames when I sold, but other than that, all the other booster boxes never sold. Um, but I wasn't selling it to make money per se. It was more just reallocating money. It just happened to be that I made money um, selling off the product. But that wasn't the purpose of it. It just happened that way. I was mainly just selling it to reallocate money towards booster boxes. So that wasn't the main reason why I sold them. So I hope that answers your question. If you're the person who commented this, hopefully I answered this comment well. And now you understand um, why I sold the stuff. So next... You're saying that your card shop pays 81% of market value. That's highly doubtful. No way they're going to stay in business paying that high of a price. If the economy turns down, then they will go out of business for sure. So again, like I said, the card stores I'm selling to, they specialize in Pokemon. So obviously most of their sales and basically all their sales are going to be in Pokemon. So their liquidity for Pokemon product is probably a lot higher than just normal card stores, game stores. So they're willing to pay higher price for uh, you know these products and I'm selling to them. And the stuff I'm selling to them are good products, so they're willing to pay a higher percentage because let's say you're going in there and you're selling like electrode V boxes or just random collection boxes, they're not going to offer very good market price, trust me. They're going to probably give you like $9, $10 per box. But the products I was selling there, if you look at them, Lance's Charizard V boxes, Ar Arceus V figure collection boxes, these really like nice checkling blisters, obviously they're going to be higher priced because they're just more sought after. So I feel like that's like 80% isn't that extreme. And think about it, a 20% profit margin for a business, especially when they specialize in Pokemon, I would say that's pretty good. Like that's, I would say pretty average for this industry. Um, and then this person saying that it's highly doubtful. I feel like out of all the channels out there and like, I feel like my channel is pretty 
like transparent so i'm surprised that this person thinks i'm lying to them but i guess that's just how it is um but yeah i don't know how we got the 81 percent. i didn't i didn't do the exact math on it but um they paid probably somewhere between 70 80 percent on the products that i sold and on the more expensive stuff they gave me a higher um percentage um some of the stuff like the chilling rain blisters i did get a way lower percentage for so um there's, there's that so hopefully whoever commented this this answers your question next here this guy has zero idea see like okay if you're gonna comment honestly <laughs> like you can just like can everyone just be a little bit calm like you don't have to say this guy has zero idea like so negatively you could just be you know you could be critical but can we all just be nice around here so this guy has zero idea can't hold things very long and then gives it away cheaper than anyone else you think the car store would wouldn't sell online or would accept that price if he was the customer um i'm not really sure what you mean by that but constant mistakes after mistakes after mistakes so i get a lot of comments like i said these these videos where i talk about selling, selling things it attracts all the investor bros right that just can't sell a single product uh, and won't sell a single product because they just think that holding everything for three to five years automatically means that they're going to make like a million dollars so like I, I feel like these people don't understand that i'm reallocating money like i'm not just selling stuff and just pocketing the cash like i'm buying other products and the reason why i'm selling the stuff is because i'm reallocating it to booster boxes which i feel is a better product than these collection boxes i have so that's why i'm selling them and uh i guess they're saying that i'm selling it cheaper than anyone else i feel like these people don't take into account um, selling when you sell online right on eBay you can get the most you can pretty much get top dollar um, so if you take the market price you do the fees and you do the shipping from my math from the stuff I've sold it wasn't a big difference at all and some of it was actually very similar so I feel like these people don't really take fees and all these other factors into account when selling online so I think those people should probably think about that too because if you really do the math especially if you were to sell those collection boxes individually I actually made more money than if I were to sell on eBay. So um, hopefully that answers your question. Okay, then the last um, comment I have here is selling Arceus V-figure collection boxes um, for $30 each and the Lance's uh, Charizard boxes, 27 each is an L. So this is, you know, an opinion and, you know, obviously the numbers seem pretty low here. But like I said, if you do the math, right, the Arceus V-figure collection boxes, they're going for what, $40, $45 market price, somewhere around there, right? If you do 87% and you do shipping costs, if you were to sell each box alone, the prices I got for them are actually the same or even for the Lance's Charizard boxes, I got a better price than if I were to sell on eBay individually. So hopefully you guys answer, you know, see what I'm saying here. Um, this is not, like I said, to promote negativity or anything, but I feel like a lot of these people are being misled and just kind of blinded maybe by watching some other channels out there that are in the investor bro community as well and they don't talk about all these other factors. Um, so yeah, that's the end. This is just a quick video. I just want to answer some comments. So thanks for watching.